Hi, I'm Jason Schroeder from the Scottish Men's Shed Association. We are creating a video series called Outside the Box, which shows the journey of various men in Scotland who have had the opportunity of creating a men's shed from scratch. Very seldom in Scotland do we actually have a building which is a ready-made men's shed you can move into. And so often our men have to think outside the box, get right down to the grassroots again in their community, and drive it up from the bottom all the way up to the top until those doors are finally open. And this Outside the Box series video 1 and now chapter 2 is highlighting Aberhurda Men's Shed and their group in Aberdeenshire. It's taken years and the journey still continues. Their lives have changed and lives are changing all over Scotland by these types of adventures that men are now partaking on and partaking in. And we're very proud to be able to um, create this type of series to stimulate other men across the country to get up and, and make this happen for them and their communities in their lives. So I really hope you enjoy this chapter one and chapter two of the Outside the Box with Abba Herder Men's Shed series and uh, thanks very much for watching. Have a great day. My name is James Patterson. I am uh, secretary of the organization here and uh, just trying to keep things running the best we can. The Menshed project in Aberhardt was spoken about about three years ago, but there was a lapse in time in that, and uh, we've been really an organisation for about a year and a half. Probably February 2016, I think it was. We all got together and started to move things forward. I think we was lucky at that time because X amount of us, when three years ago, we would have still been working. And, well, most of us was retired now, so we were looking for something to do. And the men said, came along, and uh, I just felt a big gap, really. Well, in my life, the men said has changed with quite a bit, because when I retired, I, my chief hobby is model boat building, and which I was going to spend a lot of time at. But I can now see that I would have quickly got fed up of that, just sitting in the shed all the time. So the men's shed came along and uh, when the project began to take shape, it helped me to get to uh, know some of the locals a bit better. And, and uh, just we've bonded a bit and just really got together. And yeah, it's really changed my life. Cause, uh, I would have had a lot of boring days, I think, now that I've retired without it. And now you come up, waking up in the morning, and we'll go away to the shed and see if Dodge's there today, and there's bound to be something to do. <laughs> so we just, yeah, I think uh, we've all benefited from it, really, at the end of the day, yeah. I'm uh, Chairman Kenneth Christie, Kenneth, uh, the rest of the boys. We started a year past June. So we're now in our second year and uh, we've been negotiating with the, the housing, Aberdeenshire Council housing. They have rented us an area of land where there was five houses here before. So we have a lease set up for five years with the housing. The houses were just knocked to the ground and crumpled in, so you know what like a state the area of land was when we took it over. Because our, our uh, site agent, Dodd Christie, he just says, where will we start? Upper Shadow, Main Shed, Vice Chairman Dodd Christie. Mostly since the guys got together I've been, as the big guys have said, <laughs> I'm the man left sort of thing, the site foreman, but well, we're a good team that way, all the ground works. Obviously behind the scenes there's stuff they'll never see, but this is where we are today for the cabins to settle. Water, hydro, brought into the site, across the polytunnel, just everything in general. Very good. So have you used any of your skills from your past work now you retired? Here at all, or is there something brand new for you? Yeah, that's where I've been lucky, really. I suppose the men's shed has been lucky that I've been here. Well, James, 
I've been in the depth, depth that I was, but um, my life was our civil engineering work. So the ground works within the main shed here is, yes, I'm sure I've brought a lot of knowledge into it and passed it on to the guys that you're working with, wondering how it is to get the work out. But it has done at the end of the day. Here we are now. So tell me, what, what have you actually got here? You had a blank site and, and no buildings. So what have you designed to be fitted here? We have six port cabins, three 32 by 10s and three 24 by 9s. The, the three 32 by 10s are going to be the social area, toilets, uh, and uh, just a check-in area. The three, the two 24 by 9s is joinery, uh, boat building, any diff different scales that anybody wants. And the third one is a blacksmith's, which is sited on its own. So that's a, set, that's a set up of the whole thing. Also, put up a polytunnel back in May. It came into production into June. And uh, with raised beds made from potato boxes, split into two, so that gives you a 15 inch deep raised bed. And Bell Davidson, he's in charge of the polytunnel. So everything's looking well at the moment. How have you achieved the funding for this community volunteer men's shed? Well, uh, we had a good long think about it when we set the, came together and we tried for funding from one or two organisations. We were quite lucky to get the People's Health Trust come on board with us and give us a, quite a substantial sum of money for that one. And uh, Kenneth, our chairman, approached the 200 club, which we would sell 200 tickets for £10 each that lasted the year, and that gave us £2,000 just into our hand just straight away. And then we've been running coffee mornings, of which I think we would be hold the record in the village for achieving the most of the money taken in. So it's just gradually gone that way, and we've been going for funding in other organisations as well. Yeah, we're just working away at Lord Norn really trying to get funding and trying to keep our own things in the village to fundraise really, yeah. Scottish Men said there's been a great help to us uh, really from day one. Jason has been behind us and in the role of uh, with the AVA and now Scottish Men said. So uh, that time he's, he's pushed us on, I suppose, really, and given us the confidence to do what we are doing. And just, he's uh, given us quite a, a boost in that, and paperwork and things, helping us through all that. And uh, now we feel that we can manage a lot of that ourselves, just after his guidance and everything. Start of timber. Timber delivered on Tuesday. Start of cladding for cabins. Had a few problems on the way finding our feet, but now I think we've got it done. Okay. But you can see now, a, a year into to our project, we're getting our premises set up and to be all f fixed up today, ready for working inside. Here we go again now, about five months down the line, and I hope you liked the video from the last time, but uh, we've progressed quite a bit since that time, and outside and inside here, but at this time of year we've been concentrating more inside, splitting the, the cabins and making the social area. I don't think that was in the last one. Uh, oh no, it wouldn't have been, because the cabins was just coming on site, so we've done that. And, We've had a lot of work on the roof to get things waterproofed really with. One of the cabins was more damaged than what we, uh, what, what we thought at the beginning, so 
that was a little bit of a, a task for us, but okay, once again we overcome and, and uh, that's just the name again, been overcoming hurdles for quite a while really, but we've enjoyed it and it's been very good. As we are looking at this wall here, it's been stripped down from just the plasterboard and everything off. This wall will be cut out and there will be joined to the other cabin to make the social room for meetings and people just to socialize. That is it. And that is the other end. Starlet is welding up his beam for the cutting out of the wall to make the social room. As you see, the most important time of the day, tea time. Local joiner Robert Linklater has uh, volunteered to do the wet walling of our toilet here. So the young man's just not long started. So just a view from inside cabin three. Looking back the way at the cabin two. You see the orange beam up there, that one has to be welded and fixed yet in place. And then the cutouts of the wall with a little bit left for Stanley just to work on. And then we have again, we have our social area for uh, our meetings and everything. Just a quick view from the top end of the social area, looking down into what will be the computer room. Through again in the back there, through the gap will be the kitchen. And then we come right round the, the panel in the middle again, which is to be cut out at a later date. Now we've got the computer room, with its desks fitted. Blacksmith. We have a blacksmith on site, and he is very keen on the, the main shed. He has laid the, the beams here for the floor of the passage through from cabin one to cabin two. He has up the side here, he's welded on the, screwed on these, and then we have some beams across the roof to carry our new roof, which will all be done just in due time. This, uh, between the cabins here, is basically a service area to get, uh, as you can see, our pipes at the back. If anything was to go wrong, this would be a service area to get in there and repair or whatever. We hope we never have to, but that's it. Some cabins need a little bit of work in the roof after, over the time dampness is set in. They're not leaking, but uh, just enough to take the plasterboard down. So we have these to repair. We're going to put in other uh, insulation rather than the glass pool, foam type. Looking from the kitchen area up to the social room. The boys has been very, very busy. Most of it's done, plasterboard and done. Just swinging around there. If I don't want to do it with one of these windows yet. And there's up the, the ceiling where the beam is. The area here. Just working away, fridge in there, space for the cooker. Down here, down this side of the window is the sink. Toilet area, number one. Pan there, sister on wall. Round, we've been donated a nice unit here. Started the new uh, area between social area cabins and small cabins for woodwork and metalwork cabin and a little storage area floor was put in yesterday so I hope to get the roof done today take more footage later this is just the new entrance into the place uh, the barrier up for the wheelchairs and things just walking forward here there's no notice board up in the side of the building with all our bits and bobs. Toilet number one. 
disabled toilet with the toilet all fitted up and sink and we just uh, go around the kitchen here, the unit's in and everything, so just the cooker, the cooker is there as well, no you're okay Mike, and round with the sink and everything here. The seat sitting at the breakfast bar, being used as a, a shelf as usual. Looking through into the social room. Most of it is papered now and ready for painting. I'll just go in a bit here and let you see the type of paper if you can pick it out. Computer room is videoed before, but just a few entries here. It's been papered as well. Some computers lying there in the 49 inch daily, gifted by a lady in the village. This is just used as a store now. This is the lobby between the the woodworking and the metalworking area. So I just use a small store at the moment. And just a quick sweep round in the social room. Mike going hard at it again. The only one it's work. The only one it's working today. Oh, it's fairly warmer in here than outside. Yeah, you do know the difference, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that's me away. Oh, so, it was a great to meet you. Yeah. Great to see you this. And uh, I was coming to shake your hand before I go, Jason. What do you think of it, Tim? <laughs> Tell me what it's you think. It's absolutely fantastic. Inspirational. We're here. First of December and look at all this produce in here. Amazing. And a bit of broccoli to take home. Take back with me. <laughs> and here she is. The, the person who got it all going in person, no our, hiding, no hiding our lovely librarian <laughs> I've ever heard her, oh, a right. word for the camera. How do you think it's gone? Absolutely superbly. i just so proud of what these guys have done. Um, as the visitors have just said, inspirational. Candid <laughs> shots. This is what it takes. Candid <laughs> shots. This, the secrets of the trade. The wet finger. Quite so. Perfect. This is what it takes to get your main shed looking fantastic. <laughs> A uh, coffee would be great. Have you got that lethal coffee machine on? I have. Have a coffee. As you can see from the rest of the video, as Jason puts it together, how we've progressed inside with the toilets and and our social area, computer room, and uh, the kitchen, which. It's all coming together, the cooker and everything. We're all fired up with electric now, so it's it's all go. Russell was here today, actually, 
and uh, he's set up his computer and he's one now ready where we can get onto the internet and everything so we can work from the shed now if there's any computer stuff to do. So, And then through the other, the two smaller cabins are all coming together as well. But in the next few months we hope to have this open, the social area, and then we'll concentrate on the two through there and get some machines set up and and uh, outside again in the spring for video number three. <laughs> Around the local area, they speak to family in Aberdeen, they speak to family down south, they've all over and they tell them what they're doing and they get raffle prizes from them, they get this from them because they think it's such a good project. Yeah. And the whole community comes out, you see people at the coffee mornings that you never see any of the others. Um, they've got people making quilts t to sell as raffles, to, you know, lucky squares. You, um, people that have not before been involved in anything because they admire what the men are doing and they see what the project is and they see what good it could do, not for, for just for their husbands but for other people in the community and for the woman. Their husband's got a purpose in life. He's going out. He's coming back at the end of the day. And they've got a conversation going again because he's got, I, you know, she can't get a word in edgeways because he's got so much to tell her. It's been wonderful. Just wonderful. Yeah, the tree here was the leader. Yeah. Oh. Can us feeling the heat a wee bit there? Aye, aye. <laughs> this is the spirit of the men's end, you see. I'll keep it warm for him until he's ready to use it again. That's what we're all about here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's so true. That's oh, uh, I've got a nice compliment uh, here. Uh, it suits me and everything. An no, I don't know. An improvement? No. Well, there you go, boys. <laughs> Every little helps. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a little bit big. He's got a bigger head than I have. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed watching that as much as we enjoyed making it for you and I hope it inspires you into creating amazing places just like the men in Aberhurda are doing and other men across Scotland. If you haven't joined the Scottish Men's Shed Association then we invite you to and the easiest way is to go online to our amazing website at www.scottishmsa org.uk and join. It's as easy as that. It's free membership for anybody over the age of 18 in Scotland and we welcome you all into this grassroots movement to help our Scottish sheds grow across our nation.